Hey guys, and this video is on the Renown system. So, for those of you that don't know, the Renown system is a brand new system in Black Desert, which gives adventurers bonus AP and damage reduction based on their gear score. It's calculated by using your AP plus your Awakened AP divided by 2 plus your DP. And from now on, I'm not going to call it Renown score, I'm just going to call it your gear score. So, the Renown system released on April 18th, and instantly became somewhat controversial, or okay, really controversial among the player base. And for good reason, because while yes, this is only the first iteration, they're going to continue testing it, make tweaks as needed, this first iteration sucks. Like, there are very few players that I've talked to that are happy about this brand new Renown system. And most of them are players that are already at the absolute top of BDO and benefit from it uh, because any players that aren't at the absolute top of BDO uh, really don't get to benefit too much from this system. So the stated goal of the Renown system was for this update to help you really feel your character grow stronger and at the same time help rookie adventurers to better endure the damage received from stronger opponents. So that's all pretty good. It uh, it's sort of an end game goal so that as you get stronger, your character gets even stronger, I suppose, which I'm not sure if that actually makes sense when you think about it, but that's what they want. And to help rookies better survive geared players burst, which is a great goal because currently, uh, well, before the round system rather, rookies, new players, 400, 450 gear score, even up to 500, are not actual players when it comes to node wars. Yes, they can take control of flame turrets, yes, they can grab an axe and chop away to fort, but when it comes to clearing out the enemies and setting up pushes, up to about five, from 500 and below, so from about four to 500, which is node war ready, you're not actually gonna have much of an impact just because any player that was at a decently higher gear scale than you, like 520 or higher, could steamroll you pretty easily if you didn't manage to land a crowd control ability on them. However, you did have the option to land a crowd control ability on them if you were good enough to do so, and even in 1v1 situations, you could try to combo them to death using proper crowd control combos. But with this new system, you can't do that anymore because this system is all about making the strong stronger. Uh, the common term, I suppose, would be the rich getting richer. This is a system that rewards players that are already strong with more strength. And that is a problem, because Black Desert was never initially supposed to be a game about infinite scaling and always improving your character. While that's kind of the game it's become in the last year and a half or so, when Black Desert released, the maximum gear was plus 15. And that was a fairly achievable goal for most players. It wasn't necessarily easy back then, because of the very limited number of black stones and actual gear on the marketplace to repair your gear with, but it was a goal that could be achieved and you could get plus 15 and participate in node wars and do as much as you could. Of course, there were still issues in balance with sorceress and rangers and to lesser extent with uh, witchers, uh, witches and wizards being OP, but Gear-wise, it was all kind of balanced out. There was no infinite gear scaling. You're never going to hit full pen, uh, continuously grinding for that next upgrade. And players that have been playing for years being able to absolutely stomp newer players or even players have been playing for nonstop for months just because they've been lucky in getting upgrades. It was more about player skill and broken classes. Now, broken classes are something that can be fixed, so... Player skill is kind of what it was meant to emphasize early on, and high skill classes like the Tamer and the Sorceress received quite a bit of praise when you saw a really good player playing that class and making full use of all their tools. Now, however, with the release of the pen system and plus 20, all that stuff, infinite scaling is kind of the thing in the Black Desert has become known for. You are never going to get to full pen unless they make full pen drastically easier to get to. Even the brand new Kafris enhancement system isn't going to make full pen attainable for the vast majority of the player base, even the vast majority of people at full tet, just because of how difficult it is to get. 
But infinite scaling is really what the pen system has introduced, and that would not be a problem if the scaling wasn't so lopsided. However, the scaling in Black Desert is the inverse of what the scaling is normally in other Western RPGs. In a traditional Western RPG, you scale really quickly and then start to slow down for a bit before scaling when you hit max level, and then you scale really quickly again as you get yourself geared out in a good set of armor and weapons. And then you scale really, really slowly as you just slowly try to replace these good pieces of weapons and armor with optimal pieces of weapons and armor. But these optimal pieces usually don't offer too much of an upgrade, it's usually 5 at most 10%, which is a lot when you're doing high-end content such as raids and every tiny bit of DPS and healing matters, but it's not so much when it comes to PvP, where a single good combo can kill either player uh, as long as you're just wearing a good piece of, uh, well, a good gear set. In Black Desert though, it's the other way around. The scaling starts off really slowly, it takes a long time for new players to get good, decent gear, not even good, not even decent actually, to get gear. It takes a long time for them to get to plus 15 as they learn money making methods and learn how to play the game. And then from plus 15 to duo, they speed up because they usually have attendance rewards and stuff. And then your scaling, your, well, your ability to improve drops off a cliff as you start to need hundreds of millions of silver to upgrade, but you're still in the mindset of earning a few million silver is a good thing. However, the scaling, instead of dropping off a cliff, sprouts wings and flies. It is absolutely insane how the scaling gets as you go beyond try. Once you get to try, you are able to easily dominate anyone at do or below. Once you get to tet, you can easily dominate anyone at try or below. At least before the patch, you usually could as long as skill levels were equal. If the other player was a lot more skilled than you, they could still reverse the tables, uh, you make proper use of their iframes, use all their abilities for their class to defeat you. For example, good sorceresses could not stomp me, but I usually didn't win against them just because they use their iframes and their invisibilities effectively, and I could never really deal with them. However, nowadays, if a good sorceress that's wearing duo or tri gear tries to fight me, I'm just going to laugh because they do no damage, and once I get out of their crowd controls, I'm going to practically one-shot them. And the scaling only gets more ridiculous as you go up to Tet and Pen. It is crazy. But the ability to get to Tet and Pen is massively neutered because of the RNG enhancement system and how difficult it is as a newer player to establish a proper money-making system so that you can make the hundreds of millions or billions of silver a month it requires for you to get these upgrades and start hanging with the big boys. What this renowned system does is it makes that scaling even more ridiculous. We already had changes to the way AP scales past 250 AP, so each point past 250 was way more valuable than each point before. Uh, we've already had a few other changes to make high-end players even more powerful. But the renown system, uh, it's even worse, just because how it works is based on your gear score, but your first couple gear score requirements don't give as much as later ones. If for damage reduction for AP, each gear score requirement gives the exact same, it's plus two for each different bracket. But each bracket for AP, the first few brackets are all massive. It start, your first bracket AP starts at 88, then it d almost doubles to 163, then you add another 50 to go to 211, another 40 to go to 252 and above, and then you start to... So sorry, this is gear score, not AP. Uh, you're adding AP at these renowned scores, though, these gear score levels. Then it jumps up by 40, uh, 40 again, 40 again, and so on and so forth. So the AP bonus is the most reasonable, because getting to 470 renowned score is not actually that difficult. You can do it within a month if you are dedicated to the game. But damage reduction is an entirely different story. Similar to AP, the first uh, renown level, so first tier for renown score, is at 68 instead of 80. And then it jumps up by 60 to 123, jumps up by 70 to 190. And then it starts to go up by about 40 at once, 230, 270, so on and so forth. But each of these are only adding one damage reduction. So plus one, plus two, so on and so forth, up to plus 10 at 463 and above. However, at 470 and above, 
it goes to plus 15. And it continues to add 5 for every renown level past that. But these renown levels are much closer together now. Instead of being 30 to 40 gear score changes different, they're now about 7. So 470, 477, 484, 491. And the difference between someone at 450, which is a damage reduction of plus 9, and 500, which is a damage reduction of plus 35, is 26 damage reduction. The difference of someone at 450 and 550 is about 69 damage reduction. It That is a lot of damage reduction. That is a huge amount. A new player might be taking a bit less damage with this new uh, system, as they stated, because they do have increased damage reduction now, but they're also doing absolutely nothing. You are going to be tickling high-level players because you have no AP to break through all this massive amounts of damage reduction that they have. So the scaling of the new Renown system is absolutely ridiculous. And honestly, increased scaling is not something the Black Desert really needs. Increased scaling is a great thing in games such as World of Warcraft, where there are finely tuned mechanics for raid bosses or new dungeons, mythic dungeons, and they don't want players to defeat them too early, so you basically hit DPS checks, tank checks, heal checks, and you need to be able to pass these. By rewarding the players with new gear for beating them, players are slowly able to make the new content easier as they struggle to get through the first few times, and by the time they're all geared up, they are able to pass through the new content without too much trouble, both due to the experience gained and the increased gear score, and thus DPS, tanking ability, and healing that they're able to put out. In Black Desert, there's nothing like this. There are world bosses are just giant loot pinatas that you've got to dodge when the screen turns red. Um, the hardest PvE content is still just grinding the same things for hours on end, uh, stuff like Giffins, which it's difficult, don't get me wrong, I cannot do it myself because I'm too low for it, but it's not ex really challenging content, it's just tedious and a stat check. So they don't really need to increase increase scaling in Black Desert to make players unable to go to these zones, players already can't go to these zones. What they can do is increase the scaling like this to try to stratiate or stratiate, however you say that, these zones so that players kind of magnet or magnetize, gravitate, there we go, gravitate towards the zones best for their current gear score, which would kind of alleviate the issue of being able to do absolutely nothing to geared players in 1v1s because hopefully these geared players are not in your Saucen's rotation or your Wandering Rogue's rotation. They're over at Pilaku Jail and the even more geared ones are over at Giffen in Kama Sylve. But at the moment the system is totally messed up. And for anyone saying, oh well you can just avoid PvP, don't, you know, if someone presses Alt-C and flags up on you, just run away. Sure, I can run away, and I mean, I run away pretty often when I get flagged upon by someone that absolutely annihilates me. But there comes a point when running away is not exactly what you want to do, because Black Desert is a game based around the concept of limited resources. So in Black Desert, there is a limited number of resources with which you can use to earn silver. Now there are resources that everyone can use, such as having your own worker empire, uh, fishing, uh, there's all these types of resources that everyone can do, although even fishing, there's exhausted and abundant uh, fishing spots, so if you can find a really good fishing spot that no one else has been to, you will t profit much more than if you're just going to the Valley Hotspot or the, currently the Koi Farm and fishing the exhausted waters just like everyone else. But these limited resources, such as nodes for guilds to fight over, grinding spots for players to fight over, and even items on the market are really what drive the Black Desert economy. And the players that have access to these resources are going to grow stronger much more quickly than the players that don't have access. And because of the nature of Black Desert, an open world PvP game where PvP is encouraged, players that are already strong are going to monopolize the best spots, which means players that are not strong are forced to gravitate to worse spots, which would be fine if there were better spots for the worst spots. But usually in Black Desert, there is always a few spots that are top dog. 
Uh, back in 2017, it was Saucens and Pirates, where despite the fact that these were lower level grinding zones for much of the top geared player base at 61, 62, you would still have these players at soft cap coming and absolutely destroying people at 57, 58 that should be farming there because these were the best spots in the game. And there's no way to really avoid this as the battle of limited resources means that the best resources are always going to be monopolized by these top dogs. But because the amount of silver that these top tier resources provide is so much better than most other methods in the game, for example, Man Up, who managed to keep their castle for over 30 weeks, were getting huge payouts every week, um, there's no way that your average player, or even most top tier players, were able to compete against Man Up players in terms of pure silver just because the payouts they were getting each week were more than most players were getting each week for just grinding and AFKing. And mana players could also grind an AFK. So you don't really have many ways to compete against these top tier players. These top tier players are going to keep getting way more silver than you and keep enjoying all these limited resources. Now, in most games, how this is kind of handled, if there's a limited resource type thing, is the limited resources help, but there is a cap in place where no matter how much gold, how much silver, how much of whatever currency the game has, you are going to get hard stuck at and barely proceed. In Black Desert, that cap is Tet with the occasional pen and try yellow accessories. But getting to that level in most games is usually a lot easier than proceeding past that level, as the game developers want more players at endgame so that the content, which is usually designed with endgame in mind, will be enjoyed by more players, and more players will spend money on these things that are relevant to endgame. In Black Desert, getting to soft cap is probably harder than most other video game experiences I've ever done. I'm not even at soft cap yet, and I've already played Black Desert more than I've played a lot of other games. I've beaten Skyrim, like, on 20 different characters, and I've still played Skyrim less than i played Black Desert, and yet my character in Black Desert is not even at soft cap, which isn't the end, especially now with the new renown score. So if getting to soft cap was the end, it would be fine. Um, well, not fine, honestly. Even soft cap is, with the enhancement system, hopefully the new Kafra system helps to get for getting to Tet items, but with how accessories work and how limited they are on the market and how expensive everything is, uh, even soft cap is a little outrageous, if I'm being honest. But it is good that there is a game, I suppose, that offers the ability to continuously scale. The problem is how powerful the scaling is. So, getting back to my original point, Tet should be pretty much the limit. Honestly, if I'm being honest, Try should be the limit. Try is pretty much the point where most dedicated players can get to, not with ease, but with effort and putting time into the game, and learning about how to play the game, most players can get to try, not without too much trouble, but through a combination of dedication and effort, they'll get to try. It's... you'll get to try. It's not hard, it's just really, really frustrating when on your path there. And I'm talking about try boss gear, I'm not talking about try green, try boss gear. So getting to try should be the soft cap of the game, with Ted and Pen being... So we're more like prestige points, where yes, you've got Ted and Pen and you can show off and you're a bit more powerful, but a skilled player wearing full try is still going to have a good shot at you, probably like 40, maybe even 45%, if we're being generous. Right now, even before the patch, even before the renown patch, that was not the case. A player in full try is going to get stomped by a player in full Tet, just because full Tet offers so much extra gear score. Uh, I believe it's like... 30 extra DP and 16 extra AP just for the armor and weapons, not even taking into account the accessories, which is another giant load of AP. It's like, uh, I want to say it's like 18, 20 AP from the accessories if you've upgraded all your yellow accessories to try. So clearly there's a pretty big disparity here. And now the new renown system, so the real problem with it, is this. 
it's taking players that are already way more powerful than the average, and it's turning them godlike. There is no way to deal with these players now. Previously in a node war, if my guild and I noticed that the enemy guild was on our level, because there's nothing stopping tier 2 and tier 3 node war guilds or even siege guilds from dropping on tier 1 nodes, so probably about two-thirds of our fights we just end up against top-tier guilds and get raffle stomped anyways. But if there's a guild on our level, you know, average 460, 470 gear score with a few 500-plus gear score players, and we notice that they have one gear score player, a really high geared player, that was dominating us, or usually two or three, um, we could crowd control them, and then we could all gang up on them and mess them up. We could defeat them. It was, you know, as long as if they played properly, they could try to avoid it. If their guild played properly and had proper teamwork, they could obviously beat us because having three was better than the fact our, we have like two of those players. But now when you try to fight these players, they kind of just laugh it off because they are now so much more powerful than these 450, 460 gear score players that there's nothing they have to do. There's nothing that they have to worry about. They have way more damage reduction now. Uh, just a 500 has an extra 30 damage reduction compared to 460. That's It's only a 40 gear score difference, but 40 extra damage reduction. That, that is a lot of damage reduction. Ur Urgon's boots or shoes, whatever they are, give a bit more damage reduction than that, but not by too, too much. And that's just 500. 500 is not that high. Uh, going up to 530, it's up to 60, which is an extra 20. And if you go up to 550 and above, uh, you're at 75 and upwards. Like, that's just damage reduction. And then they also get the extra AP so that they can break through you. They get extra AP buff based on their AP. So it's not just um, damage reduction AP buffs based on your gear score. There's also an extra AP buff based on your AP. So from 100 to 139, it's 5, going all the way up to 309 and above, where you get an extra 200 AP. 200. Like, that is a lot of AP. That's more AP than a player using full try boss weapons. Uh, not with a Nuver though. So full try boss weapons with a green accuracy offhand, which was the meta until this recent patch. And duo to try blue accessories. That is more AP than that player will have. Just in bonus AP. Like we're not. That's not their AP. They've already got 390 AP. Then they get an extra bonus of 200 AP. And there's also an extra damage reduction buff based on your DP, starting at 203 to 210 of 1%, and scaling all the way up to 20% at 346 DP and above. So, really what it comes down to is the devs in Black Desert are trying to reward loyalty over skill. So, in most games, uh, especially PvP games, skill usually reigns supreme. Obviously, gear is a very important factor. Uh, no matter how skilled you are, if you're trying to do a naked rogue challenge, you're not going to defeat another skilled, decently skilled player wearing actually good gear. But for the most part, between two similarly geared players, skill reigns supreme. If one player is much more skilled than the other, even if one player is wearing like rares compared to the other's epics, the rares player can still win just because they are much more skilled. In Black Desert, if you tried to give one player duo or tri greens and gave the other player Tet Boss gear, that Tet Boss gear player is going to win every time, just because gear trumps all in Black Desert. And skill versus loyalty in Black Desert is really, is it, do they want to reward skill or do they want to, want to reward loyalty to the game and willingness to spend money in the game? Because the more they push higher gear scores and higher gear levels, the more they're pushing their cash shop with the artisan's memories, uh, the myriad ways to earn more silver in-game by spending money in the cash shop, and especially with the upcoming Kafra system that will make having silver a guaranteed way to get Tet and then Pen, it's almost like they're trying to say, hey, you suck, but if you spend money, you'll be good. If you keep playing for months and months and months or years and years, you have a chance to catch up to these players. And while that's true, because of the limited resources, these guaranteed tets and pens are just going to further improve the strength of the players that are already ahead, because they're the only ones with the money to guarantee themselves 
full pen. They're the ones with the money to guarantee themselves mostly pen with a few, with still a few tets. The, these are the players that have all the silver, they have all the power, and they can crush any other players trying to grind in the best spots, trying to, uh, you know, farm with their guild to get a decent tier 1 node. They can crush them without any difficulty because of this new renown system. Before, they could crush them without any difficulty just because they were siege players, and being a siege player, gear scaling was already ridiculous, but this renown system amps it all up to 11 and makes the scaling even worse. So, the other thing that it kind of implicates is new players versus top players. So, I've been accused of having a newer or average player mentality when it comes to gaming. Uh, I don't believe that's true, I believe that I have a competitive player mentality, but in Black Desert, as a more closer to the average level of player, uh, it's certainly true that my interests are not with going Dynasty Warriors on some poor tier 1 node, node guild's ass, and spinning my Musa through all of them and one-shotting hordes of 450 gear score players that have only been playing for half a year at this point and left their computers on every night but haven't got the money to buy Tets and thus they've stuck in try boss and greens and get one shot because my gear's amazing. I'm not interested in going Dynasty Warriors on their ass. I want, you know, fair fights. I want skill-based combat. I want really amazing action combat, which is what Black Desert offers, and I want wide-scale, guild versus guild, and even larger, PvP that is not just dependent on the fact that my guild has a bunch of players with super high gear score and the other guild ha doesn't, so the players with super high gear score tear through them like a bunch of foxes let loose in the henhouse. I would prefer if gear scaling, personally, was dialed back a lot so that a player in full try could even defeat a player in full pen. It wouldn't be easy, I'd probably want to give them maybe a 30, at most 35% chance of succeeding against full pen with 40 to 45 for full tet, but that option should exist. If I'm at a grind spot and I'm a skilled player, I should be able to fight any other players that come from my grind spot uh, as long as I've got decent gear. And I would say that full try is decent gear. But what this renowned system is saying is that full try is trash gear and only really full tet and above is decent gear with full tet and a bunch of pens being godlike gear. That is what this new system is saying. And as a top player, uh, I would probably see this system in one of two ways. It's a good thing for a top player because I'm already on top and now I can destroy everyone. But it's a bad thing for a top player because once all the other players leave, whales don't actually have any incentive to keep whaling. As If you want to whale in a game, it's usually because you want to be the strongest. And to be the strongest, you need to be able to show off to those weaker than you. If the game only has whales left, then the only people you're showing off as the strongest to are those who are also at your level, uh, but are a bit less skilled than you. And sure, it becomes a skill-based game then, but it, the amount of players in the game that have full tet is so tiny. Like, for all of the talk on the forums and Reddit about getting tets and failing tets and this siege guild doing this or this siege guild doing that, the amount of players compared to the actual population of the game that even have tet items, uh, well, tet boss gear items, is tiny. Like, tet players do not make up the majority of the game. They do not make up the majority of the population, not even, like, a large percent of the minority. They are at most like 10% of the game is at soft cap. Most of the game's players are level 56, level at most 59. They do AFK stuff. They've got a mix of green gear and boss gear because they haven't been lucky enough to get boss gear from the night vendor or from world bosses. And even if they've been playing a few months, they're just not powerful enough to really have any impact. And so if all of them quit, the whales only have other whales to show off to, and whales quit too. So that is kind of the worry for top players. But as a top player, I'd probably be feeling pretty good about this patch, unless I was a top player that really wanted skill to determine matchups, and because of the rather small number of other top players, found, found it rather difficult to find organic, non-arranged fights against other skilled players that wasn't me just stomping them. In fact, I'd be willing to bet there's quite a few top players right now that have amassed 
smaller gear sets so that they can get more balanced PvP, at least in Arena, if not in Open World. But I'm not sure. So my final problem with the Renown system, getting back to the Renown system, is that it's starting to require a minor or even an actual degree in math just to be able to figure out how powerful my character is. There's always been the problems with hidden stats in Black Desert, with how does this stat apply, how do these stats work, but now that not only do you have all the different stats, all your, your AP and your DP, uh, how they interact with the enemy's AP and DP, you also have, based on your total gear score, your total AP, your total DP, uh, a bunch of different buffs that are all applying, You've got it interacting with all your crystals. You've got it interacting with all your uh, various skill set stats. Like, the amount of obfuscation they're adding to the stat system is crazy. And it's stupid. Like, the stat system should not be this complicated in Black Desert. We literally have two numbers and then accuracy ev evasion and damage resistance to worry about. As well as the crystal stats, attack speed or casting speed, uh, crit, and a few resistances. Like, there is not that much to worry about. AP is your damage, DP is your defenses. Damage reduction uh, affects flat damage done, evasion lets you dodge attacks. Like, that is not that complicated a system. It's not like we have 20 different stats we've got to kind of keep track of and figure out. We're not back in vanilla WoW trying to figure out if spirit affects your build or not. Like, this should not be as complicated as it is, and they're just adding more and more complication. Now, an optimist could say that they are adding more levers with which they can use to balance the game. By adding these extra levers, they can uh, decrease the amount of renown score required to gain the max amount of AP, increase the maximum amount of renown score between each level for the damage reduction bonuses, they can change how much damage reduction bonus you get at each point, the Optimist could say that they will use this to try to balance the game and be more friendly to the player base at large. The Cynic says that they've spent the last year and a half trying to make the game as top-heavy as possible, and that they're only going to continue this trend by with the Renown system, and this is probably going to be pretty close to its final form, and that new players, are, and even most of the existing players, are essentially screwed whenever they find a player that is about 20 gear score or higher than them once they hit 500 gear score because they have absolutely no chance against that player. Like seriously, this if they introduce this in the inverse where you're, you've got a lot of renown score bonuses in your first couple of renown score tiers, so you got like plus 10 AP by the time you were at 100 round score and then you only got to plus 20 by the time you got to about 500, and then same for damage reduction, you were at like plus 50 by the time you reached 400, and you only got to, oh my god, it goes to plus 165. Okay, so you got to like plus 100 by the time you reach 400, and you only get to 165 by the time you're at like 500. So 150, I suppose, and you could get up to, up to at most 165 at 550. That would be much more in line with what you'd expect from a game, where scaling has diminishing returns as you get more gear. Unfortunately, uh, Black Desert seems to have fully embraced the idea that the better your gear, the harder you should scale, and players are getting more and more powerful for already being powerful, whereas the weaker players are getting more powerful but are getting weaker and weaker relative to the already strong players that exist, which in turn means that the weaker players can't contest for any of the grinds, good grind spots, weaker players are kicked out of the better node war guilds, and weaker players get destroyed by the random node war guilds, that, the T2 and T3 guilds that drop on T1 nodes because that is the way that Pearl Abyss has implemented the node war system. Anyways guys, um, personally, I just don't think the Renown system in its current implementation is a good idea. If they just inversed it, I'd think it was a great idea. But the way it's currently implemented, the, with the rich getting richer, the strong getting stronger, uh, I just feel that it is a terrible way to go and that it's going to make the already gear-based PvP in Black Desert even more of a meme where players that have just played the game for way too long and have amassed billions and billions of silver are able to absolutely raffle stomp players that have 
been playing as dedicated players for two, three to four months and should be decent vets by now, but are instead still cannon fodder in Node Wars. Anyways, I know this video is really long and kind of a rant, and it's probably going to get a lot of downvotes because <laughs> it's kind of controversial. But comment below, uh, leave me your opinion. Uh, I will try to respond to most of them, as I do with my opinion videos. And uh, yeah, just tell me how you've been affected by the Renown score changes. Uh, say, tell me how you'd change it if you could, or how you'd make it better. And uh, try to have some constructive arguments in the comments. That's all I ask, guys. Just don't go down to the level of normal YouTube comments, please. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. Um, I hope you liked it, and have a good one.